In order to determine the orientation of diffusion within each voxel, we will create a basis function from the subject's own data. By extracting the diffusion signal from representative voxels within the gray matter, white matter, and cerebrospinal fluid, we will build a model to estimate what the signal should look like in different orientations and when we apply different B values. The concept is similar to using a hemodynamic response function as a basis function for fMRI data. We have a canonical shape of what we believe the fMRI signal should look like in response to a single event, and then we modulate it to fit the observed data. In this case, however, we are estimating the response function for each tissue type. If you happen to collect your diffusion data with multiple B values, then this approach in MR tricks is called multi-shell multi-tissue or MSMT. Unlike most fMRI studies, which use a basis function that has already been created for you, MR tricks will derive a basis function from the diffusion data itself. The command DWI to response has several different algorithms that you can choose from. But for this tutorial, we will use the Dollander algorithm. Let's unpack what this command does. First, it uses an algorithm to deconvolve the fiber orientation distributions, or FODs. In other words, it decomposes the diffusion signal into a set of smaller individual fiber orientations. You have several algorithms to choose from, but the most common are Tournier and Hollander. The Tournier algorithm is used for single shell data and for a single tissue type, for example, white matter. The Hollander algorithm can be used for either single or multi-shell data and for multiple tissue types. The next argument specifies your input data and the resulting response functions for the different tissue types, labeled here as WM, GM, and CSF.txt. The last option, Voxels specifies an output data set that shows which voxels from the image were used to construct the basis functions for each tissue type. I'm going to go ahead and run this and come back in a moment. You can view the output with MR view. We will use the overlay load option to overlay the voxels data set we just created on top of the denoised, pre-processed, and unbiased diffusion data. Representative CSF voxels are colored in red, gray matter voxels in green, and white matter voxels in blue. Make sure they are where you think they should be. For example, the red voxels should be within parts of the CSF, such as the ventricles. You can then check the response function for each tissue type by typing shview followed by the tissue type name. Look at each of these files individually. The first image that pops up will look like a sphere. This represents what the diffusion looks like within that tissue type when a B value of zero has been applied. In other words, when there is no diffusion gradient. By pressing the right and left arrow keys, you can view what the basis function looks like when different B values have been applied. Note how the overall magnitude or size of the sphere for each tissue type becomes smaller when higher B values are applied. Although higher B values are more sensitive to changes in diffusion, the overall signal is smaller and more susceptible to noise. Within the white matter, the sphere tends to flatten into a pancake when diffusion gradients are applied, reflecting the preferential direction of diffusion along the white matter tracts in those voxels. For the gray matter and the cerebrospinal fluid, on the other hand, the basis function remains spherical across all of the B values. Notice how the rate at which the sphere gets smaller is different between the CSF and the gray matter tissue types. We will now use the basis functions we just generated to create fiber orientation densities, or FODs. These are estimates of the amount of diffusion in each of the three orthogonal directions, and MR tricks can estimate multiple crossing fibers within a single voxel. To do this, we will use the command dwi to fod to apply the basis functions to the diffusion data. Since we collected our data with multiple shells, we will use the MSMT CSD option, followed by the pre-processed and unbiased diffusion-weighted data as input, 
and then the mask option to restrict our analysis to only those voxels within the mask. After each of the different tissue types, we specify an output file in MIF format, WMFOD, GMFOD, and CSFFOD. This command will take a few minutes to run, so I'm going to fade out and come back when it finishes. In order to view these FODs, we will combine them into a single image. The command mrconvert will extract the first image from the wmfod.mif file, which is the image with a b value of 0. The output of this command is then used as an input into an mrcat command, which in turn will combine the FOD images from all three tissue types into a single image that we will call vf.mif. The white matter FODs can then be overlaid on this image using mrview with the dash odf.load sh command, so that we can observe whether the white matter FODs do indeed fall within the white matter, and also whether they are along the orientations that we would expect. The output should look something like this. If you zoom in on the image by holding command and scrolling the mouse wheel, you will see the white matter FODs overlaid on an image color-coded for each tissue type. Green represents gray matter, cerebrospinal fluid is depicted as red, and white matter is shown in blue. Now focus on a region such as the corpus callosum. If the FODs have been estimated correctly, the predominant color in the corpus callosum for the FODs should be red since red indicates that the primary orientation is left to right. If we look at another structure, such as the superior longitudinal fasciculus, it should look green, because in MR tricks, green color codes for posterior to anterior directions. And if we look at something like the corona radiata, it should primarily look blue, because again in MR tricks, Blue indicates that the primary orientation is inferior to superior. Later on, we will learn how to do a group level analysis with the data that has been generated for each subject. In order to make the comparisons valid across subjects, we will need to normalize the FODs. This ensures that any differences we see are not due to intensity differences in the image similar to how we correct for the size of the brain when comparing volumetric differences across subjects. To normalize the data, we will use the mtNormalize command. This requires, like most MRTRIX commands, an input and output for each tissue type, as well as a mask to restrict the analysis to brain voxels. This only takes a moment to run, and when it's finished, we are going to check the output just as we did with the FODs. It shouldn't look any different from before. All we want to do is make sure that the color coding is still reasonable and that it is still primarily contained in the white matter. Now that we've correctly estimated the FODs for each tissue type, we are ready to begin laying the foundation for our tractography analysis. The next step will be to determine the boundary between the gray matter and the white matter, which we will use as a starting point for our streamlines.